this is Hudson Vintage. Today, I pulled 20 pieces from the collection, all representing flowers and feathers. And it's everything from super high-end, antique, Japanese, Natsuki, all the way to Zara earrings, which I call future vintage. If you've been around a while, you know that I talk a lot about future vintage and I'm a vintage jewelry expert. And if you have any questions about anything that you already have, you can always email me at hudsonvintageatme.com or there's even a place in the website for identifications and evaluations. And that is over at shophudsonvintage.com. And once again, it is a beautiful collection that I pulled. You can see here, and it's everything from the most high-end antique museum quality Japanese necklace right down to the Zara earrings, which I will show you last, and I call those future vintage. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So the first piece is the Victorian Canatel Daisy Necklace. And this is it right here. And it is a uh, Victorian. It's in the style of a festoon necklace. And it has these little gold wash centers that are actually pinned in at the bottom. And I pulled this because it is a beautiful, delightful thing to start the video with. It's just so pretty. Everything in this video is so pretty today. And this is on the website right now. Uh, and then there are some things that I will be adding. My goal is to add new things to the website every third Thursday. So you'll always be able to check every third Thursday and see what I've added. And this dates from the Victorian era and it's twisted silver wire with the gold wash centers. Number two is the Damascene 1960s pendant. And I have it on a bust with a little uh, painted hummingbird, which I'll get to later. But this, I found out, I just thrifted this recently and I showed it in a live thrift haul that I did. Um, the last video I posted actually was a live thrift haul. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. But I found this while thrifting recently and I wasn't sure how old it was. And someone in the Facebook group told me that it was given to her in the seventies and probably purchased in the 1960s. And it's perfect for this video because it is actually feathers and flowers. There's birds and florals in there. And this is from Spain and they made this for tourist trade for a very long time. But um, this one I think is especially nice. This is the first one I've ever actually seen like this. Look, it still has the tag on it. I paid $7 for this. It has the cutout on the wood. So that is a pretty special, pretty rare one. Also the size of it is really, really nice. And this will be coming up soon. I'll either put it on the website or it'll be coming up in this month's reverse live auction. And this is number three. This is really beautiful. This is actually in the style of antique scrimshaw, but it is a more modern piece. So it's definitely more humane and more ethical. It still counts as vintage. It's 1970s. It's a little tiny painted hummingbird on bone. And it's really beautiful. Um, I just love the sweetness of this and it's dainty. And the hummingbird is so charming and it looks like he's singing. These are number four, and these, I believe, are angel wings. So I don't know if they count as feathers. I guess we could just call them wings, but they look like angel wings to me. And the thing that I love about these is that they're really big, but they're still delicate because they're so open. And these are made out of sterling, and these will be available soon too. And there's a left and a right. And those are really beautiful, fun little winged or big winged earrings to add to your collection. Okay, so number five is a bit of a mystery to me. I've actually had it in the collection a really long time because I wasn't sure what to do with it. It came from my best estate sale purchase that I ever made in my life. And that was probably about 15 years ago. Let me show it to you. This is it here. This is what you would call the tuba gas or the gas pipe chain. This is 1940s. Look at this. Um, I never tested it for gold. I never really considered selling it, but it's probably gold filled now that I look at it. And the back is so interesting. It actually clips on like an enhancer clasp, but it's like a bracelet clasp. Can you see that? Isn't that interesting? And this is carved glass leaves with the large rhinestones, really beautifully made. 
Never did find a signature on it, although I must confess I never really looked that hard, but I don't expect to find one if I look now. And it's gorgeous and I love the length of the chain that it's on and the chain itself is fantastic. So that's a real find. This is extremely 1940s, um, very indicative of the 1940 era, but this is a really good example. And it's pretty, it's beautiful flowers with green carved glass leaves, just a lovely example of floral vintage jewelry. All right, number six is also another favorite. They are the hummingbird earrings. If you've been watching for a while, you know that I have this thing for gilt Chinese enamel jewelry. Here they are. These are, these are actually not as old as some of the other ones I have. I'm going to be doing another video on that pretty soon, I think, because it's definitely worth it and I have enough in the collection. I've been collecting a long time and if I ever get them in, I just give up on the idea of selling them. I know it's never gonna happen, but these are lovely. These also have a left and a right. They're three dimensional. They're done on both sides. And just, I love the curve of this hook too. I don't know if I can make it so that you can see it. See how perfectly round that is? Um, and these just hang really beautifully and lovely. So those are excellent little example of enameled uh, polychrome bird earrings. So pretty. This is number seven, and this is just a little more lightweight piece of fun. This is 1970s. This is a carved resin floral bangle. Um, it's very easy to wear and they're really coming back now. So I could see stacking these with a lot of other fabulous cuffs, even from the 1980s, like the Art Mardern ones, or even the silver ones, um, like the antique Victorian silver buckle bangles would look good with this. Just anything really, even black and white, black and white would be good together. And I like that it goes up pretty far in the arm too. Okay, these are numbers eight and nine, these two. This is Japanese, this is antique, um, all the different kinds of flowers. This is very special, this is a museum piece, um, a super very important kind of thing. There's a secret to this on the back. This is, this is actually called shunga, and it was what mothers gave their daughters so that they could learn about the art of love. Um, before their marriage. So it's got these other things on the other side, on the flip side, which I will show you later. But anyway, so these two are as number eight and nine, and these are both circa 1960. They're both really fun. I have always worn these together. This is long and plastic and gorgeous. Um, I think there are some glass beads mixed in there. It does have a clasp so you can layer it. And then this is actually a vintage Vendôme. And look at that with the dangled. These are glass beads with glass marbleized kind of end of the day bees in these pretty lavender and pink and purple shades. And um, they dangle from these little plastic leaf um, caps. So really very fun to wear together. And I think that if when you add the glass to the plastic, it really does something. Isn't that pretty? Very feminine, so pretty coming up um, for the summer season with all the little summer dresses coming up this summer. And I know the 70s and the 80s are having a huge return. So something like this, I think is gonna be really wearable um, and pretty relevant and just so pretty and not expensive. These are number 10. And the thing that's so incredible about these, these, you can find them, they are round. They are vintage hand-painted tourist trade from the 1940s. They were made in Cuba um, and they're very folkloric. They're really pretty. And the thing that is so amazing about this particular pair is that it is convertible and reversible. And this is the only pair that I've ever seen like this. If you take a good look, you see here the beautiful delicate florals. These are also really nicely painted florals. I've seen ones that were more abstract. I like how these are really pretty nice florals and they're on the black. And there's the two hoops that come out of this oval. And then if you turn it around, you'll see that it is now white with the, de the delicate florals on it. And the reason for that is because these are designed so that these little hoops slip out of these rings in the back, not easily, like you have to do it on purpose. Um, so you don't have to worry about losing them if you ever find these things or if I ever decide to sell them. But the way now, so this could be worn so many different ways. This is such an ingenious design. If I ever make jewelry, I'm gonna borrow this 
for some interchangeable convertible type hoops because you can wear this just as the oval drop. You can wear it with one hoop, you can wear it with two hoops, or you can reverse it and do the same thing on the other side with the white. You can wear one white, two white, one black, two black, one black, one white, you get the idea. So, <laughs> and they're, they're so pretty, they're so feminine and yet they're so cool. Like they still have that cool factor. So these are awesome. Okay, so now we're getting to, this is the Japanese Shungo necklace and this is really, really, really a lovely, lovely thing. Um, you can see it has all these different painted, this is antique. This is really very important. This will be up on the website soon. Um, this is the best example of this that I have ever seen. It's loaded with all of these. I haven't counted, but it has a lot of these different tiles and it has all of these different kinds of flowers. And then on the other side of this necklace, it is actually a Shunga necklace. So it's erotic art and it was made for um, a mother to hand down to her daughter so that she could learn about the art of love. Um, in, for her marriage. So let me take this off. I'll show you the back. It has its traditional um, closure. And, oh, I wanna be careful. I don't wanna flash anybody with this. <laughs> there. So you can get an idea of what this necklace was supposed to be teaching. Isn't that fantastic? And it's so beautifully done. It really is art. And I love that it's kind of a secret, you know, and the flowers are multi-chrome and really, really beautifully done. Here's like peony. Um, let's see if there's any other flowers that I know the name of. I think this looks like lavender or grape. Anyway, there'll be better pictures on the website. I will be putting this up on the website. It is important. So check that out. Um, if you are looking for something really special for Mother's Day or for a wedding gift, it's really spectacular and I'll just flip these around. Number 12 is also really special and pretty high end. This is made by Danecraft. This is also 1940s. This is floral. Look at that. It's kind of like a lotus flower and this is in like new condition. It is eerily perfect. The markings on the inside are perfect and it's it's just a beautiful, the thing that I love about this is that even though it's flowers, it doesn't have that sweet quality. It still has kind of a cool factor. And this I will be putting up on the website and uh, quite possibly also in the live reverse auction, which is happening the second Sunday of this month. So stay tuned for that. And then this I've, I've shown you before in one other video, but it was worth pulling again because it's such a beautiful example of good floral jewelry. This is uh, sterling. This is from Bali. This is circa uh, Y2K or 1990s. And this also has carved serpentine leaves and all these carved mother of pearl flowers. And it's an amazing collar. I just, this I will not be selling, but I wanted to show it to you because you know, if you ever find something like this, you have to be able to recognize that it's such a good, beautiful piece and people often overlook sterling from Bali. Next up, number 14 is from the 1970s and this is also Chinese, but this is cloisonne and this was, um, this is in perfect condition too and it's double-sided. And I have it on an old Monet chain, which I think is perfect for it. It's that kind of fox tail or box link and so it doesn't just drop down like it's nice on something that keeps its curve a little bit and he's just the cutest little owl it was very trendy actually in the 1970s it was a big trend this closet a there was a lot of butterflies around you've probably seen the butterfly barrettes or hair combs or belt buckles and so this is from that era but i love the little owl and i love that he has a little blue head which means little blue feathers so how cute is that and he, there's a lot of color on him so he's really really delightful 1970s and then we have here this is all 16 through 20 and these are all different pins um, except for the earrings, which will be last. So this is really exceptional. This is the 1940s stork pen. Isn't he beautiful? Look, look at how three-dimensional he is. Look at the uh, turn of his neck and the gestural quality of his face and beak. He's just incredible. He is a vermeil. He has the large blue um, rhinestone or crystal. You know, sometimes people call that a jelly belly. 
Then we have this. This is another really special three-dimensional piece. This is 1960s Vendôme. This is all black. Look at these flowers. Look at how three-dimensional they are. Isn't that incredible? All the little leaves stand up. It even looks good from the back. You can really see the, the sculptural quality of that. And this is japanned and it's signed. And this would look really great even on a choker, I think, with a high collar. So wearable today, absolutely gorgeous. And I love that it's black flowers. It's sweet again, but uh, it's not saccharin. You know, there's something really cool and modern about the black flowers. This is number 18. This is in the feather department. It's a vintage Prince of Wales pin. This is circa 1940s. And I love the size of this one. I haven't seen one this big. And also just a very cool kind of quality to this one. I've worn this on a hat um, and even on a beret. And you can also put it on a chain or on a coat lapel. And it's a nice one. It's an old one. And then this is number 19. This is very delicate. These are velvet millinery pansies. And you can see there's these little buds hanging here. And these were to adorn a hat, but I've worn them on sweaters and it's a lovely, look at it. Look how beautiful that is. It's just so charming. And this is 1940, the latest. Sometimes I look at it and I think it could be even earlier. Um, the colors are so beautiful. This is like painted velvet. Isn't that just the most beautiful thing? I love that one. And then finally, number 20, future vintage. These are the hand beaded Zara earrings. I knew instantly when I saw them that these were much better quality. Sometimes Zara will throw in things that are much better quality than everything else in there, you know, made in different places and everything else is made um, in the usual places. But look at this. Isn't that great? Oh, I love them so much. I absolutely adore them. These were about 40 bucks and I think you can still get them secondary market for not very much, but they're probably about uh, four seasons old. They're probably almost two years old right now, but look, aren't they beautiful? And that's number 20. So thank you so much for watching. Coming up next week, I am showing you modernist jewelry pieces with tips and tricks on how to find it and how to recognize it and how to collect it and how to wear it. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.